Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're continuing on with our untested wallpaper upload implementation. By way of a quick recap, figuring out how the file upload process should work inside Easy Admin Bundle, if you've never done this before, is a little bit overwhelming. So what we're doing is we're first doing this without tests to see how it could be done. And then we're going to go back and redo it in a test driven manner and see how the implementation might differ. Now towards the end of the previous video, we're about halfway through our wallpaper upload listener implementation. We just added in the service definition, but this won't actually be triggered as of yet as we need to tag this service. And this is so that the appropriate events inside Doctrine will call the functions that we expect on our wallpaper upload listener. So to do this, I'm going to have to use tags. And tags are a little bit of a tricky thing, in my opinion. For the longest time, I found them very confusing. And that's largely in part because the way that each tag works can be different depending on the bundle. So about the only thing that they have in common is that all tags need a name. And in this case, the name of the tag is going to be the doctrine event underscore listener. So what that means is behind the scenes, when doctrine is loaded as part of the wider bundle loading process of our Symphony project, all our services are going to be examined and the different tags will hook into different parts of the various bundles that we've got going on. In order for this particular tag to work properly, we need to set an event that we're interested in. Also, this will become the method name that needs to be called. And this is following Doctrine's naming practices. In our wallpaper upload listener, we've already decided that we're going to have this pre-persist function. And this ties in exactly with the name of the event that doctrine will be dispatching. So we'll set pre-persist here also. Now you can change that. You could have it as a completely different name, but to maintain better readability and maintainability of your code, this is the suggested way of doing it. Just because we're tagging our wallpaper upload listener, if your brain works anything like mine, you'll instantly tie this to just wallpapers. And that's not the case. We are saying we want to be interested in literally any pre-persist event that Doctrine throws out. So whenever Doctrine dispatches this pre-persist event, we want to call pre-persist on our wallpaper upload listener. As part of that event, Doctrine will also send these lifecycle event args. That's where it's coming from. So this sort of happens behind the scenes. It's not something that we directly control. We are literally just hooking into it. But again, because we're hooking into this pre-persist event, that event is going to happen whether it's a wallpaper or a category or literally any other entity that we create in our project. And that's why we had to be defensive. Now there is a different solution to this problem. We could use a doctrine entity listener instead and we'll approach it from that way when we come to write our tested version. Just to explore concepts really. Okay, anyway, with our service tagged up, let's try and create ourselves a wallpaper. So I'm gonna choose a file, I'm gonna say space one, slug doesn't matter, width doesn't matter, height doesn't matter. Try and save those changes and we're getting an integrity constraint violation. The column file name cannot be null. So if you think back to it, when we were creating our wallpapers, whether it was using the fixtures or the console command, and if you're unsure on any of them, please look in the show notes, then we were setting this file name manually. Unfortunately, now we don't actually include the file name field, and we don't really want to either, as we've said, we're quite happy taking whatever we've been given. So if it's going to moan at us about this, then we need to do something about it. We need to jump inside our wallpaper upload listener, and then under this, update the entity with additional info, spelled incorrectly, my, my apologies then we already know how to fix this because we've already got access to the information that we need to be able to fix it. So I'll just say entity, set the file name. And in this case, we'll say from the file, get the client original name. So does this fix it? Well, let's give it a shot. Well, that's a shame. We need to fix that. That's a bug. So if we look inside our web images directory, what it will have done is even though the upload process appeared to fail, the file itself still ended up on our disk. That's likely something we'd want to test for. So it's a pity we're not writing any tests. So we'll save changes. And this time things are looking pretty good. There's definitely some improvements that we could make here though. We're currently setting the width and the height ourselves, which isn't really what we want, but we need to specify them inside our add wallpaper form. So if we take them off, then we know that we're going to get some doctrine error that we're missing a field. These values shouldn't be null, but we're going to do that. So we're going to jump in here, get rid of the width and height, in fact, let's get rid of them completely. Let's just refresh the form to make sure they're gone. Very good. And then jump back inside our wallpaper upload listener. And we'll do something very similar to what we did when we used the console command, which is to get the width and the height dynamically. 
So we'll say just up here, we'll destructure from a get image size of our new file path, the width and the height. And then we can immediately use them to update our entity. And if you're unsure on any of that, and in fact, I've used the wrong syntax there, but if you're unsure on any of that, please do check in the show notes as that is covered in more depth in an earlier video. Okay, so let's save that. And this time we'll try and upload that Solano beach picture. And again, the slug doesn't matter. I'll save those changes. Things look good this time. We didn't need to do any manual setting of our width or our height. Now, if we jump across to the database and let's give this a refresh, you can see one sort of major problem and one lesser problem. So we're not really setting the category ID at the moment. And that's the lesser problem. That's not a problem to sort out really. The bigger problem is this, this file thing. This makes no sense. We don't need it. We know how to figure out the file path. We're using that path to our project directory, then the web images directory, and then the file name. So storing this information is really nonsensical. So what I'll do is I'm going to update my wallpaper entity. I'm just going to jump up to the top here and I'm going to take off the annotation for file. I might as well at this point close the others as well, just to keep this a little bit tidier. And then because we've made a change to our schema, we're going to want to generate a migration and then we're also going to want to apply that migration. And so now if we look inside our database and that column for file has gone and we'll just try and do an upload for which we'll need to delete these two images. Just to make sure that this is all working as expected, we'll do space one again, any slug. We're all good. And again, just check the database and we're all good. So this was the really rough approach to doing an upload. Now that we've seen how it should work, we're going to revert to a couple of videos ago before we'd implemented any of this and rewrite it using PHP spec. And before we do, I'd like you to think whether you think this will be easier or harder and also whether you think the design will be better or worse as a result.